Hello there, welcome to yet another Make Science Easy Biology lesson. In this lesson, we are going to be learning about animal classification. We're going to be looking at how we can classify animals and how we can put them into different groups. All organisms, such as animals, share features with each other. So all animals have some similarities between them, even though you may not think it. You may not think that a human is particularly closely related to an ant, but we do share some common features. One of the most obvious is that we all obtain food by consuming it. We eat other living things. This sets us apart from plants which do not eat other living things. They produce their own food through photosynthesis. All animals then digest their food through a digestive system. Again, this is very different from plants who do not need to digest their food because they are producing it. All they need to do is then turn that glucose that they produce into energy through respiration. All animals need to digest their food. But there are huge differences between different animals. And in order to effectively study them, we need to classify them and put them into groups. Now, generally, when animals are classified into groups, we're put into groups with other animals that are physically similar. But it's not just the physical similarities that we look at. We also look at the genetic similarities. So when we group animals, we group them by their physical features and by their genetics. Generally, genetically similar animals will also share a common ancestor with each other. The first stage of animal classification is to classify it as either a vertebrate or an invertebrate. Now, vertebrates are animals that have an internal skeleton. Although generally the term vertebrate just refers to the backbone, but any organism with an internal skeleton is called a vertebrate. Humans are vertebrates because we have a skeleton inside our body. Invertebrates do not have an internal skeleton. So if we look at the two pictures here, a giraffe is a classic example of a vertebrate. It has a skeleton inside of it. The lobster, on the other hand, does not have an internal skeleton. It has a hard outer shell. So the giraffe is a vertebrate. The lobster is an invertebrate. So let's have a look, first of all, at the invertebrates. And let's look at what we call the phyla. Now, phyla are the general groups that we can put them into. And the first phyla are annelid worms. Annelid worms are segmented worms with a cylindrical body shape. So the picture here is of an earthworm. It has a cylinder-shaped body, and it has lots of different segments in its body shape. Annelid worms can either live on land or in water. And annelid worms have an opening at the front and the back of their body. Arthropods are our second phyla. Arthropods include insects, spiders, centipedes, and crustaceans. And arthropods generally have a hard external skeleton, and they have limbs that are jointed. So if you look at the picture here of the crab, you can see very clearly it has a hard outer shell, but its legs also have joints in them. So an invertebrate with a hard shell with limbs that are jointed are arthropods. Nidaria are soft-bodied. They have stinging tentacles and they live in water. So this jellyfish is a prime example. It has a very, very soft body. It can sting and obviously it lives in water. And Nidaria only have one opening to their body. So everything enters and exits their body through the same opening. Echinoderms are another phyla. They have five-fold symmetry. This means you have five planes of symmetry in their body. And this starfish is a classic example of that. It has an external skeleton made up of lime, which is the chemical calcium carbonate. And the skeletons are generally covered with spines or spikes. Mollusks are another phyla of invertebrates. So they include snails, slugs, an octopus or squids. They're soft-bodied and they have a muscular foot or tentacles. And some of them, such as a snail, have a hard shell, but they don't need to. And finally, we've got what we know as nematode worms. Nematode worms are also known as round worms. And their bodies are not segmented, so they're smooth. So this is very different from an annelid worm that has segments in its body. A round worm or a nematode worm has a smooth body. But its body is cylindrical, just like an annelid worm. 
and it is pointed at both ends. Now, although invertebrates are put into phyla when we classify them, vertebrates are placed into what we call classes, and there are five different classes of vertebrates. Mammals, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and birds. Each class has very different features that allow us to classify them into the correct class. So all mammals have things in common with each other. All birds have things in common with each other. So let's take a look first of all at mammals. And as humans, we are mammals. Now, one of the key features of mammals is that we can control our internal body temperature. If we're too hot, we can cool ourselves down. If we're too cool, we can warm ourselves up. All mammals have four limbs. We can see this in humans, we have two legs and two arms. In some mammals, such as dolphins and whales, it's a little bit harder to spot, but they do have these limbs as well. Mammals have a body covering of fur, and mammals are really the only organisms that have fur on their body. And mammals give birth to fully formed live young. Mammals are the only class that really do this. Also, mammals do something very, very special that no other class does, and this is that we feed our young with milk. And mammals also have a diaphragm under our lungs to help us to breathe. Our next class of vertebrates are the birds. Birds have a very obvious and distinct feature, which is that their bodies are covered with feathers. Birds, just like mammals, have four limbs. They have four limbs which form their wings, and all birds have got wings. And birds, again, just like mammals, can actually control their own body temperature. The upper and lower jaw of a bird extend in order to form a beak, and all birds got a beak. And birds lay hard-shelled eggs, and the chicks hatch from these after incubation has occurred. Now, one feature that not all birds have is the ability to fly. There is a misconception that birds can fly. And if you look at the four pictures of birds, we can see a penguin and an ostrich. Penguins and ostriches are flightless birds, so even though they have wings, they cannot fly. So do not assume that all birds can fly. Our third class of vertebrates are the amphibians. Amphibians live their life in two different phases. The first part of their life before they reach sexual maturity is spent living in the water. The second phase of their life is spent living on land. During their larval stage when they're living in water, amphibians have gills. During the adult stage of their life when they're living on land, they have lungs. Amphibians lay soft, jelly-like eggs in water, and the eggs are fertilized externally. This means that unlike mammals, they do not have sexual intercourse. A female amphibian will lay eggs, and a male amphibian will spray sperm onto those eggs and fertilize them. Amphibians have also got smooth and moist skin. So if you touch an amphibian, it feels very smooth, and it feels wet. If you look at the feet of an amphibian, the skin between its toes are webbed. There is skin in between their toes. Amphibians also have four limbs, just like mammals and just like birds. But amphibians cannot control their internal body temperature directly. Our fourth class of vertebrates are the reptiles. Reptiles have dry, scaly skin. Now again, there's a misconception here. People often think reptiles are slimy. People may say, I'm not going to touch that snake, it's slimy. Snakes are reptiles, they are not slimy. Their skin is dry and covered with scales. Reptiles lay tough and leathery eggs. They're not hard like bird eggs and they're not soft like amphibian eggs, but they are tough and leathery and the eggs are fertilized internally, which means that reptiles have sexual intercourse. Reptiles can regulate their internal body temperature by basking in the sun. So you may see a reptile lying out in the sun, absorbing all the sunlight. This helps it to warm its body up. If it goes out of the sun, its body temperature will drop, 
So it's very hard for a reptile to control its temperature other than by lying in the sun. This is not like mammals that can shiver if they're cold or sweat if they're warm or do lots of other fancy tricks to control their body temperature. Reptiles can merely lay in the sun. And other than snakes which have lost their limbs, reptiles also have four limbs. The final class of vertebrates are fish. The body of fishes are covered with flaky and overlapping scales. So reptiles also have scales, but their scales are tough. On a fish, their scales are not tough and they are flaky. Fish spend their entire lives living in the water and they do not breathe air or have lungs. They obtain their oxygen through an organ known as the gills. Fish have got fins to help control their movement and they reproduce sexually, but their eggs are fertilized externally. This is like amphibians. The female will lay her eggs in the water and the male will come and spray sperm over the eggs. So fish have some features similar to amphibians, but are very, very different to the other groups. Now there are some problems with classification and we've mentioned a few of these already. But classification can be difficult as organisms from different classes may appear to share similar features. So it's generally the body features used to classify living things, not their mode of life. So if we look at the picture of the goldfish and the orca, the killer whale, we can see, well, they both live in water. So does this make an orca a fish? Well, no, because an orca needs to come above the water level to breathe air into its lungs. An orca will give birth to live young. An orca mother will feed its live young with milk. An orca will reproduce sexually with internal sexual reproduction. Fishes will not do this. They do not go above the water to breathe oxygen because they have gills. They lay eggs and those eggs are fertilized externally. They do not produce milk. They do not give birth to live young. So they are very different. We can also see the bird of prey and the bat. Both of these animals have wings. However, a bat is not a bird because if we look closely at its wings, there are no feathers on it. There are just flaps of skin. A bat will also give birth to live young and feed its young milk. A bird will not do this. It will lay an egg and it will not feed its young milk. So we need to look at the body features in order to classify things and we need to look carefully because there are some organisms that are not easy to classify. Now one tool that we can use to help us classify things are known as classification keys. And classification keys are a series of questions. So we have one here. So we can think of an organism and it doesn't matter what this organism is for our purposes and we can use this key to classify it. So the first question we may ask ourselves is, does it have hair on its body? And it is a yes, no question. There are only two options. If the answer is yes, then we know that the organism we're looking at is a mammal. If the answer is no, we know it is not a mammal. Does it have feathers? If the answer is yes, it must be a bird. If the answer is no, we need to ask another question. Is the skin moist? If the answer is yes, it must be an amphibian. If the answer is no, we need to answer another question. Does it have dry scales? Is the answer yes, it will be a reptile. If the answer is no, it will be a fish. So this is a very simple classification key asking some yes, no questions that allow us to classify vertebrates. In summary, all animals are classified to make them easier to study. The first stage of classification is to decide if an organism is a vertebrate or an invertebrate. Body organization is then used to classify living things further. There are numerous classes of vertebrates and phyla of invertebrates. The five classes of vertebrates are mammals, birds, fish, reptiles and amphibians. And classification is not always easy because sometimes it seems that organisms have features from different classes. So we can use a classification key with yes or no questions to help us classify organisms. 
I hope you now know the main phyla and classes of vertebrates and invertebrates and the features they have. I hope you now know how to use the classification key and how animals are classified. Until next lesson, keep on learning.